Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet tonight. Hallelujah. As we begin this service. Hope you've had a good day. Are you happy to be in the house of the living God tonight? We're going to play a song that's uh, been difficult in the past, but I think we got a breakthrough today, and we're going to play it for you tonight. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to baptize tonight. We're praying right now. Can we just stretch our hands towards Billy Joe? Her mother passed away yesterday, and God, we just... We just thank you, Lord, for restoring the years that the locust and the canker worm tried to devour. God, we thank you for the shaking. We thank you, Lord God, for obedience. And we thank you, Lord, for all you did in this relationship before her mother crossed over. Lord, she could not bring her mother back to where she is, but she can go and be with her mother one day. And we're just thankful for the restoration power of you, Jesus. Bless my sister, Lord God. Let this Bible study tonight and the fellowship of her church family encourage her tonight in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. One, two. I'll never be more love than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. Doesn't take a trophy to make you cry. I'll never be more love than I am right now. Going through.
so thankful that you remind us, God, uh, that you'll always be enough. That you're more than enough, God. Forever enough, God. And for that, we praise you. We give you thanks tonight, God. And as we enter in, God, we ask that you will move by your spirit in this place, God. Help us to always be mindful, God, that you said in your word, you'll never leave us or forsake us, God. And God, as we go into this study on tonight, God, anoint the man of God afresh and anew, God. And as he opened his mouth to speak the oracles of God, Lord, let your Shekinah glory fill this place, God. We won't overflow, God. Take us to that place of overflow, God. We thank you for what you're going to speak into our spirits tonight, God. Realizing, God, we need not man to validate us, God. It's only when we go into your presence, God, and you speak a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and a word of understanding, God, that will take us to that secret place in you. We thank you tonight for what you're going to do. Have your way, God, in this place. Truly, you are Jehovah Jireh, God. Meet every need in this house, God. Comfort those that need comforting, God. Encourage those that need encouraging, God. And we say, do it for your glory. For truly, it's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray and all the saints of God said. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap. You may be seated. Oh, man. Look, we, we started out, we played that song three times in a row a while ago. And first time, we put it together. The second time, we nailed it. Yeah. And then the third time, live on the air, I missed one of the bridges. Uh, more than you ask, think, or imagine, according to his power. I'll get it right. I'll get it right. 
But uh, it is a good song, man. We've got, it's just too good not to try and do. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to go over this prayer list later tonight. But like I said a while ago, we want to remember uh, Billy Joe's mother. And uh, we will get that information for you here in just a moment. They're going to have a memorial service on Saturday in Bailey. Get trying to get that together at White Oak Hill. White Oak Hill, is that a Baptist church? White Oak Hill, Bailey? Okay. And uh, you're thinking what, maybe 1 o'clock? Okay. We will put it on uh, the, the, the CFC page then as soon as we know. And then we want to also pray for uh, Pastor Jimmy Revis' son, Michael, who uh, went uh, to the uh, doctor today and found that he has a mass on his brain. And he's going into uh, pretty, uh, I think this is kind of a moved up prompt surgery come Friday. So he really needs prayer. And we're going to intercede and pray and anoint someone on, on his behalf. Amen. I tell you what, we'll anoint my pastor. Uh, Brother Jerry, if you don't mind, later tonight, we'll go off the air and we'll anoint you on behalf of Michael Revis, and we will pray for him, okay? But I want to go through the announcements real quick. Uh, services are always available online with Facebook Live and YouTube. Please share. Please share. When you share the service, you're sharing the gospel because the gospel is preached in it. Amen? There's plenty of ways you can give. If you cannot attend, you can give on our website, cfcsandycross.com. You can go to our Share Faith app, and the download instructions for Apple and Android are on our website and Facebook page. And you can mail in your donation to Christian Fellowship Church, 7814 South NC Highway, Elm City, North Carolina, 27822. Again, thank you for your faithfulness during this difficult time. When we came through COVID, we praise God for the biggest year of giving in the church. Um, and now inflation has hit. But in the month of July, the very last month, was the biggest month in the history of this church. Hallelujah. I'm like just shocked. And so, but it's, it's what God does. And um, we're going to continue to be faithful. We're going to continue to sow into missions. Come on, somebody. We're going to continue to preach the gospel, and uh, you're going to see some wonderful things, wonderful uh, building, wonderful additions onto the campus, and uh, it's going to be wonderful. So get ready. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go on a ride. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. You can give in person now by safely dropping your tithe or offering in an usher's bucket. Or simply by using your mobile device where you are right now. Any visitors tonight turning your slips at the Connect Corner after service, we have a gift for you. There's books out there that you can pick up too. Under a Big God VBS Circus was awesome. If you brought your kids, thank you so much. And we, uh, again, thank Joy Meadows. And she's got uh, something going on in her throat tonight. Uh, but we thank her and her whole team for that. Men's and Ladies Fellowship lunches resume next month. Leaders and Volunteers Rally next month. It's going to be on the first Sunday at 6 p.m. Excuse me, that's going to be a typo. We decided and we changed it last night, and I had already made these uh, announcements, so it wasn't quite my fault. Uh, but we, we're, it's going to be a lunch thing. We're going to do a, a leadership rally and volunteer rally, uh, and it's going to be awesome. We're going to ask people that want to come to bring food. We're also going to you know, provide some food, too. And this is going to be a chance. We're not going to have life groups for right now. We're scaling down, and what we want to do is we want to get to know each other, and not just so that you get to know each other in your life group, but that you get to know everybody in the church. Uh, if you want to serve, if you want to uh, pursue a leadership role down the road, all these things. There's going to be leadership training going on this. We're going to be taking people to conferences. Uh, we are going to learn even more as we grow because we have to. Amen? We have to. And so we're going to have all kinds of devotions there, from leadership devotions to discipleship devotions to everything about serving in a church, all guests coming in, and we are going to uh, get together. We're going to fellowship like Christians do. We eat. That's what we do. Amen? And we're going to eat a meal together. Hallelujah. And we're going to talk about some exciting things. You're going to see blueprints. You're going to see where an architect has drawn uh, things for us to build here, and you're going to know about it. 
and it's going to be exciting. And we're going to pray for you. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to anoint you with oil. We're going to claim things over your life. Amen. And we can't do everything just to say we got something. I think when we scale down and say, let's rally the troops and get ready for a new season so we can do those things and return those things maybe in the new year and do them even better. Is that fair? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, Pastor Tim said it was, and he said it was a good idea, so I'm going with him. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, Backpack giveaway. How many know this is wonderful, anointed, and generous? Backpack giveaway for all King's kids and Fusion students. How about college kids? Can I get some help, too? Hallelujah. No. All right. Well, it's going to be this Sunday, this Sunday. So especially if you know anyone in need, and it will really help them to get a free book bag with everything the kid needs for, I think, the next day, right? They start school the next day. You bring them. You bring them to church. We're going to love on them. I don't care if they go to church here or not. We want to bless them. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Water baptism at the conclusion of tonight's service. How many know that means somebody's got saved? We're baptizing two more youth. Two more youth. Or as my cousin Vinny would say, two more utes. All right, anybody remember that movie? Water baptism at the conclusion of tonight's service. God bless you. I love you. It's been a good day. I hope you've had a good day. We got a good Bible study tonight. I serve a good God. Amen. He's blessing. He's empowering. He's encouraging. And he is delivering. Hallelujah. Oh, let me tell you what else he's doing. He's restoring. He's redeeming. He's forgiving. He's calling. He's doing all. He's equipping. He's doing all these things right now. Hallelujah. So don't think for one minute it's a dead season. It is a much, much, much alive season, and it's a wonderful time to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Fusion students as well as King's kids and Junior King's kids can be dismissed at this time, but we will send an usher after you. Because we want you to see the young people being baptized. Can we thank our volunteers for sacrificing their time with your children? And do I have time to tell you a little something out of this Bible here? Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1 through 21. We'll go through this. Pastor Tim will put a cherry on top, and he'll pray over the prayer list as I go and change, and they go and get the kids. We'll have baptism, and then at the conclusion of baptism, when we go off the air, Pastor Jerry will come up. Pastor Tim will anoint him and pray for him, and I'll join you when I get back out, okay? So help my, uh, myself remember all of that. Amen? All right. All right. We are in a new series. Somebody say what it's called validation. You know, ever since we started this series, I keep hearing this coming up in other sermons that I listen to. I keep hearing it come up in uh, uh, personal conversations that I have, kingdom conversations. God's making kingdom connections for this church and for myself right now. And I'm having a, a lot of conversations where I don't know if these people know that I'm even preaching a series right now called validation. But this is coming up in so many uh, different ways that I keep seeing it. And it is such a touchy subject. It is the root of a lot of hurt. It's the root of a lot of reasons why people act the way they may act. And do you realize that you can have a room full of people and show them the same picture? And if you've got 100 people in that room, they may view that picture a 100 different ways. And... It goes to show you that not everyone sees the same things. Not everyone understands it the same way. Not everyone thinks the same way. That is the reason why relationships can become strained. That is the reason why marriages can have indifference in it and disagreements in it and whatnot. That is the reason why partnerships can fail and falter because of the fact that people do think differently. Amen? When it comes to validation... We'll, be, we'll better know our identity and purpose when we know who validates us. To validate is to confirm validity, to vouch for what's proven. Children may long for validation from parents, coaches, and mentors. That need and desire follows people 
throughout life. You don't think I'm talking right? Well, guess what? Let a tragedy happen in your life. Get a season where you're incredibly emotionally and mentally uh, vulnerable. And then all of a sudden, even your 35, 45, 55-year-old self can go right back to when you were eight years old. And all of a sudden, you start thinking about the things that you weren't equipped with and the time you weren't given and the love and the affection that you weren't shown. And all of a sudden, you begin to feel like a less than. Can I tell you, Christian, when you are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, it don't matter what your mama didn't give you. It don't matter what your daddy did. I feel like preaching. Your mama or daddy, your grandma, your grandpa, your coach, it don't matter what they didn't give and it doesn't matter what they gave you that you didn't want none of that validates a child of the most high God hallelujah when he he bought me with a price amen and when I was born the first time I was born a citizen of the United States but when I got born the second time I became a citizen of a kingdom called heaven I still have this flesh to contend with. Therefore, this flesh is going to have needs and desires and all these things. Hallelujah. But here's the thing. Real freedom is not when you just don't do it no more. Real freedom is when you don't have the desire to do it anymore. Come on, somebody. When that which you used to thirst for and that which you used to crave begins to feel like a spirit of death come upon you, can I tell you, God will take it from you when you starve it. Anything you starve dies. Anything you feed lives. Hallelujah. But you've got to starve depressive thoughts. Not just bad behaviors, not just bad uh, uh, habits, amen, but bad thinking. Bad thinking as well. Jesus says, I validate you. That need and desire follows people throughout life. But when we're born again, we begin to see who really validates us. Can I get an amen? Amen. And he's done. And all he's done to prove how solid his validation truly is. You know how good it is to know how solid Jesus' validation is? When you mess up and he doesn't turn you away. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Can I tell you that? Hallelujah. When you begin to think in a bad way, when you begin to think in a negative way, when your mind tries to go back somewhere and then you think you're not worthy because of what you think and what you did or what you said, and then Jesus says, I was with, I was still your God even in your mess. Amen. And there's people out there, there's Christians out there. There's people that's backslid from the church and they backslid from the word of God. Can I tell you, sometimes you got to mess up before you wake up. Hallelujah. But when you wake up and you really want to be redeemed and you really say, I don't want that old life. Come on, somebody. There's a newness in that. There's a solidarity in a God who gives chances like that because man don't. Man penalizes. Man judges. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're validated by God, but so many people want to be validated by a parent. And that is important, I know. But parents are people, and people aren't perfect, and people fail. Right? We want to be validated by our spouse. Then all of a sudden, we've made an idol out of them when God, come on, somebody. Am I talking too deep for Wednesday night? (laughs) Hallelujah. How many know that God will have first place in the life of a Christian? Otherwise, he's not very interesting. Amen? But how many know just he will wait on us through our mess just like we have to wait on him in the process? Right? We have to wait. Amen? And we, if we cannot fail in the process because if you fail in the process, you don't get to hold the promise. Right? Hallelujah. Thank God for his validation. Thank the Lord that that is what we are validated by. So far in this series, we've examined portions of Scripture found in 1 Samuel where David did the following. He encouraged himself in the Lord while his men spoke of stoning him. He didn't get down and beg for his life. He didn't say, please don't hurt me like Ric Flair used to do, right? 
Please don't hurt me, please. And all of a sudden, he was just trying to get their attention. So one of the other guys on the wrestling team, anybody know what I'm talking about? Would come up behind him. It's an old, the dirtiest player in the game. No, David didn't cower. He didn't beg. He didn't grovel. He turned around and started talking to God. Amen? He started praying, and he got in the presence of God, and God shined on him. And when he got back in front of those same men who were so angry that they wanted to kill him, they began to see something different. Oh, David's fired up. David's done got into the presence of God again. Because how can they go from wanting to kill him to following him to the enemy's camp to take back what he stole from them? Hallelujah. When God validates you, it don't matter who don't like you no more. It don't matter who hates you. It don't matter who thinks they might want to kill you. God says, I validated. Good God Almighty. I validated this. Touch not the head of my anointing. Oh. Whew. All right, y'all. I'm going to try to calm down. I know we got youngins to baptize. Hallelujah. All right, here we go. So far in this series, uh, we looked at where David in 1 Samuel encouraged himself in the Lord. This past Sunday, he faced a nine-foot giant that everyone was afraid of because he knew, though, he knew that God was with him and what he had emboldened him to do in the past. In the past, he was able to kill a lion and the bear, right? God helped him with that. He knew that God would help him with this, right? He had also gotten prepared in private so he could be promoted in public, right? Matt, to hit a target perfect, he had to have hit that shot thousands of times, right? You've got to prepare yourself in private so you can be promoted in public. Yes. Your prayer life's in private, and it shows in public. And you don't have to stand around and, and, and speak great swelling words as Jesus would describe the Pharisees. You've got to pray from your heart, right? Hallelujah. Beware of somebody when they start praying, oh, thus saith God, and they start trying to just be so animated. Amen? Have some, look, I love somebody to say, oh, God, we need you. Lord, God, help us. Good God, that comes from your heart. Amen? Hallelujah. You don't have to speak the King James English to get in touch with God. Amen? Hallelujah. Tonight, we're going to look once more into 1 Samuel and then we'll move on this Sunday to something else. But this time it's concerning the entire nation of Israel at this time as a whole. As we continue this series called Validation, Father, I ask for your help tonight. As I relay this word to your people, let them be empowered, Lord God, by your word and by what you are saying through this message. In Jesus' holy name, somebody say amen two times. Amen. Now give him a hand clap of praise because he alone is worthy. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. This is my one and only focus point tonight. Wanting a king when you already have the absolute best. Right? Wanting a king when you already have the absolute best. Right? In this portion of Scripture, Samuel the prophet is the last leader from the era of Judges and he has aged and gotten older. This era had gone on since the death of Joshua after entering the promised land and establishing the Israeli borders. Samuel has quite a lot of ministry left to do. He'll anoint uh, David as next king and all of that, right? But here we'll see and examine the heart of the people. It says in verse 1 of 1 Samuel chapter 8, Now it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Skip down to verse 3. Verse 3. But his sons did not walk in his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain, took bribes, and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Look, you are old. Now that's kind of uh, insulting. Look, you are old. And your sons do not walk in your ways. Meaning, you're old. Your sons don't act like Christians. Right? We don't want them around. He says, now make us a king. Make us a king. Make us a king to judge us. Like how? All the nations. 
wait a minute, you're a covenant nation. Everybody else is a pagan nation. Not under a, they, they have a false idolatry belief, right? Do you know the man, there was a man killed, I mean, excuse me, not killed, stabbed recently, who came to a college to speak and he was attacked because he wrote a book years ago about satanic verses calling the Muslim religion an idolatrous religion. And we have sympathizers here for that. Can I tell you, he wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. He stood up for what was right. But they want to kill him. There is a bounty on the man's head. Now we have to protect him because, and he's an older man. He got stabbed right in the chest. Uh, I don't know. Has anybody heard how he's doing? I, his name is Salman Rushdie. I don't know. He's okay? Yeah. But, hallelujah. Well, thank God for that. But when you see that, we see that all around them was nations that had beliefs like that. That were not of God Jehovah. Amen? But even you say, well, Muslims believe in God. Yeah, they believe in, in God and they are mad at Abraham. Okay? That's why they hate Jews and they, why they hate the Christians who came from the Jews. Right? And so with that said, here, this is a covenant Jewish nation under Almighty God, yet everybody else around them was pagan. So it was, it was not wrong for them to, to want Samuel's sons, not want them, seeing as though they were corrupt. There's nothing wrong with that. But they were, they were wrong in why they were asking for a king. They didn't say give us a king that will serve God and lead us in the things of God. They said we just want a king like everybody else has. We want a government like everybody else has. Yet they had a kingdom government. God put a prophet over them to judge them righteously. God was their king. That was the most unique thing about this nation is how they started. And how they started is how we will end with them. With Jesus Christ as king. Amen. And he is king. Even now to us now, he is our king, and he does reign, and he'll reign forevermore. But they said, now make us a king to judge us like all the other nations that don't believe what we believe. Give me my one and only teaching point tonight. When God's people want to be like unbelievers, they're heading for spiritual disaster. Can I talk about that for a minute? Unbelievers a lot of times. Not only do they not believe in God, or maybe they say they believe in God, but they don't believe in your Jesus. And maybe they, don't, they say they believe in God, or they say they believe in Jesus, but they have so much sympathy for other beliefs. Can I tell you, I'm not afraid to tell you that I think freedom of, of religion has gotten us in a lot of trouble in this country. Because when you've got people praying in different directions, you do not know what your territory is going to get invaded by. Amen? Amen? But when we want what unbelievers have, good God, we don't need to covet unbelievers or want to be more like them. We need them to be like us. We're the church. We have the, the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're the only ones who have the way to heaven. The only way to heaven is Jesus Christ, not Muhammad, not Allah, not Buddha, not Tom Cruise, not Oprah. Not Washington, D.C. Hallelujah. My God. When God's people want to be like unbelievers, they're heading for spiritual disaster. Amen. And a lot of times the, you say, well, I, that's, that's kind of far-fetched for me. No, it's not. Christians can want what unbelievers want in a minute as long as we fill ourselves with all the things, hallelujah, to pollute us and we're not filling ourselves with enough a time with God. Can I tell you, you're going to end up looking like what you've been sowing into. You're heading for spiritual disaster. Mental disaster, emotional disaster. These things happen when we forget who our king is. Can I tell you, he's good enough to be my king. He's good enough to be my king forever. Hallelujah. Not only is he my savior, he's my heavenly father. He's my king. 
Mm. Thank you, Lord. So in verse 6, but the thing displeased Samuel. He felt depleted when they said, give us a king to judge us. And they told him he was old, too. So Samuel prayed to the Lord. Samuel was hurting. He was like their pastor. He was like the pastor of the whole nation. And they came to him and said, despite all the anointing, despite all the prophetic promises that have already come to pass, despite the fact that we know God Jehovah validates you, Samuel, we don't like your sons. We don't like the direction we're going in. We don't believe in you no more. So he felt depleted as a leader would feel when they find out from someone they've been leading that they feel as though they're not getting the job done anymore. Right? Hallelujah. It hurts. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord and the Lord said to Samuel, listen to what he said. He said, heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you. Meaning listen to them. Listen to them. Give them what they want. If you want it bad enough, God will turn you over to it. Right? For they have not rejected you. God knew it hurt Samuel. He wanted to minister to him. He's had to minister to me a whole lot. Daniel, they're not gone because of you. They're running from me. Hallelujah. Dealt with that many a time. It's not you. They still love you. They just don't love me no more. Come on, somebody. That's what he told me. Maybe I, he was trying, no, he wasn't just trying to make me feel better. He wanted me to know the truth. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's hard to hide from God. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. But did they realize they were rejecting God? You see, Samuel was affected by this. It hurt him personally. But God told him they were really rejecting him, not Samuel. Verse 8, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them out of Egypt. What? They practiced idolatry. Even to this day with which they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing to you also. He said, it hurts, don't it? He said, it hurt me every time they cried out to a gold calf or any other statue that any other person ever uh, put up. And worship. He said, it hurt me. It was their culture. And we say, well, we don't do that now. We don't have statues going on. What have you put before God? Do you know the kind of thir- your hobbies can become an idol? Amen? Your, your, your spouse, your marriage, and the things you have to have in that marriage can become an idol. Come on, somebody. A single person who thinks they cannot, they cannot wait until they get married and God is just going to know their heart. Guess what you've done? You've made sex an idol. You've made sex an idol. Because what you're saying is, God, you're not enough. I'm an adult. And I love the Lord. And I want to go to heaven because I'm saved. But I'm going to have sex because that's what I got. Have. God says, no, not unless you are within the confines of the parameters that I outlined it for. Mike, did I just turn 75 years old in front of y'all? Or am I just declaring what the Word of God is still in the verse? I know it's 2022, and I know people are believing a lot of crazy things. No, a man can't have a baby. The devil is a lie. Amen? And if you want to change things about you, then what you're saying, you want to change your gender. You want to ch- what you're doing then is you're saying, God, the way you made me won't good enough. So I'm going to remake me. I know it's hard. Been married the whole time I've been saved. Always been under a covering. Always been in covenant. Hallelujah. But those things can become idolatry when we refuse to obey God. Can I tell you, we are filled with grace, forgiveness. Nobody needs to judge nobody. But come on, somebody. We have still got to say, you know what? No, that's the wrong path for me. That's sin, and i got to stay away from it. And I can tell you right now, God will make it smell like death to you. It will make it smell. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Like you get ready to eat something, all like, oh, what is that? I want that. You about to drink something? Wait a minute. What's these skull and crossbones doing on the label? Poison. 
Hallelujah. They're doing this to you also. It's verse 9. Now therefore heed their voice. However, you shall solemnly forewarn them and show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them. So God told them essentially how they're treating you now is how they've been treating me. They've not been obeying me. No matter, I parted raging waters and seas for them. Had them cross over on dry ground. It still ain't good enough. God will get you to a point when you, some, listen, the three most dangerous words you can ever say to yourself is, what about me? What about me? Amen. The moment you start thinking about what you need and what you deserve and where you ought to be right now, and then you start to covet somebody else, and why can't I have what they have? Why can't I roll like they roll? Amen. All these different things. All of a sudden, you think you're justified in doing whatever you got to do, and God says, well, am I still not enough? And then... He will shake you and show you. Because when he shakes you, he shows you everything he's ever brought you out of. The night I was first filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I stood right there in that altar. And I looked up. And at that time, there was stained glass up here. And I looked at it. And all of a sudden, I saw a vision of a wreck I was in that I survived. And God reminded me right then, I, you would have died that night if my hand hadn't been on you. And I began to be so filled with a appreciation and thankfulness that God let me live right through that as they were praying for me all of a sudden all I knew is something heavy warm and comfortable hit me and I was laid out on the floor and I heard my pastor say he's all over you tonight brother Daniel he's all over you tonight I had an experience a throw down experience with God because of what he showed me. How he had always taken care of me. Always. Amen. You say, why do you say that, preacher? Because I think there's a lot of Christians out there that have forgotten what God's done for them. Amen. And much less they won't enter a house of God. And if they do enter a house of God, God forbid those hands go up in the air. My God, he's done too much for me for me to stand there like a statue. I love him. You say, yeah, it's your job to get revved up. No, 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 no. I'm here to equip you. But can I tell you there's nothing wrong with shouting. There's nothing wrong with dancing in the spirit. There's nothing wrong with praising. Am I wound up tonight? How many know it's a good, good feeling when he brings you through? Hallelujah. Can I tell you, this preacher, this son who just lost his father is doing a whole lot better. Hallelujah. I ain't all the way there yet, but I'm getting there. Hallelujah. So, verse 10. I'm trying to hurry up. I'm sorry. Anybody get anything out of this? I'm almost done. Verse 10, so Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And look at what he said to them now. This will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. you this is what you want. This is what he's going to do. They don't have this right now. They don't have this going on. This is what's going to happen because they want a king. This will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. Number one, he will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen, and some will run before his chariots. They're called footmen. You see, up, this, up to this point, they all work for themselves, right? They all work for themselves. They didn't have a government reigning over them. I don't know what the tax situation was, but it's getting ready to go up, all right? And to be his horsemen, and some will run before his chariots. Verse 12, he will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties. He will set some to plow his ground and some to reap his harvest and some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will also take your daughters to make perfume and cook for him and bake. In verse 14, he will take the best of your fields. He's going to take them from you. What you worked and toiled for, he's going to take it from you. He's going to take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and the best of your olive groves. And he's going to give them to his servants that work directly for him. Verse 15, he will take a tenth now 
We're not talking about tithing. We're talking about a government. This won't the church. This won't the priest. This is the king. Over here we call them presidents. But in other nations in ancient times, they were called kings, right? He will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to his officers and servants. And he will take your male servants, your female servants, your, your workforce, your finest young men and your donkeys and put them to his work. They've been farming for you. He's getting ready to take them. He's going to take your workforce from you. He's going to take your children. Everybody's going to work for him. He will take a tenth of your sheep and you will be his servants and you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves. And watch this. And the Lord will not hear you in ever, no, that day. Meaning what you, when you cry out about this, God's not going to hear you in this. Now that's strong. You wanted this. You asked for this. When you start to cry about this, God is not going to hear you in that. Hallelujah. The thing that you asked for that you may regret now, God's not going to hear. No, why God, why? God's not going to listen to you try to cuss him out. God's not going to listen to your pity party. God's not going to listen to you complain and whine about why this always. All God's going to hear once he's turned you over to something you beg for, God is going to hear this when you say, Father, help me. I was wrong. Come on, say that. Come on. You tried to show me that won't your will for me, and I wanted it anyway. God, please have mercy on me and get me out of this. Help! That's what he hears. He don't hear how bad the situation is because he knew it was going to be bad. That's why he put this intercessor and that intercessor in front of you and say, no, don't marry him. You just met him two weeks ago. Why would somebody do that? They don't know who they're validated by. Right? I want to be, I don't want to be alone because I, I see all these. You need to have who God has called you to have or it's going to be a train wreck. And it don't happen in two weeks. Can I get a witness? All right, ver verse 19, I'm done. But listen, God was letting them know that if you want a government like the other nations, this is what you're going to get. And boy, did they get it. And boy, don't we got it now ourselves. Lord, help us. Paying all the tax I want to pay. Come on, somebody. Paying all the gas I want to pay. Come on, somebody. We need a break. God, help us. Whew. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey, Pastor Tim. Refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, no, but we will have a king over us. They're demanding it now. Verse 20, that we also may be like all the nations. Still saying that stuff. We want to be like the rest of them. I don't want to be like a communist nation. I don't, come on, I don't want to be uh, like a socialist nation. Come on, somebody. I want to be the nation that God has called our nation to be. And God had called them to be the light of the world. Come on, to open up and say the Messiah shall come from you. And look at them. Still, they got God as their president. They got God as their king, and yet still not satisfied. No, but we will have a king over us that we may also be like all the other nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he repeated them in the hearing of the Lord. In, uh, in the hearing of the Lord, verse twenty again, that we may also be like all the nations. We want to be like everybody else. We want to fit in. We don't want to stand out. You see, that was still what they chose. That was their desire, even though God himself was their king. God would have Samuel anoint Saul as their first official king. He looked the part, but in time, his disobedience would escalate. And then God would give him a real good king by the name of David. And they'd have a good run after that with David and his son Solomon. And then they'd go down. 
Israel was to be a holy nation set apart, unique from all others. Their motive in asking for a king was to be like the pagan nations around them. Their desire was not at all wrong, but the reason for it was wrong. It's understandable they didn't trust Samuel's kids, especially if they were going around ruining his reputation and ministry. But they could have asked him, help us. Hold on. Raise up somebody more like you. But no, they said, uh-uh. We just want a political figure like everybody else has. When God wanted to be their king, he still wants to be our king tonight. As I close tonight, Israel's desire for a worldly king like other nations at that time was a slight on God. Today we must remember he's our savior and our king. Because they forgot that God himself validated them, the nation will fall again to idolatry so much in the future after David and Solomon, they would even split in half. They would be a torn nation with Judah in the south and still called Israel in the north. And there would be so much bloodshed, so much bloodshed. And then they would be exiled to enemy nations and took captive and made slaves. And then they would have to come back and reform the nation and build it back up. And then all, all these enemy nations kept taking over and would run the government. And they would not even have a chance to have their own government until the time that my grandparents were living in the 1940s. You realize that? They never got it back. Rome ruled them all that time. And then they had to break free, and then England had a piece of it. I know, I know all these things. But they finally formed their government again in like the 1940s. This was major. And this, though, was still God's chosen people. They're still his chosen people today. Even if they don't believe in our, in our Jesus. Even if they think Jesus was a great teacher, we are still to stand with the nation of Israel. And do you know we don't anymore? We did for a short time. There's a price to pay for that. We've got to get back in the right direction. Amen? We've got to pray for our nation. But we as Christians know who we're validated by. We're validated by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Don't ever feel like a less than no matter what you didn't get from somebody you looked up to when you were younger. God says you're the apple of his eye. He has redeemed you, made you new, and you are a child of the Most High God, and you will reign with him forever. Come on, somebody. There's, there are no nobodies in the kingdom, even though we may go around acting like a nobody because we just want to promote that somebody named God. Amen. Did anybody get anything out of that? Hallelujah. Pastor Tim, what say you? concerning this and let's go ahead and bring the kids on in tonight and you go ahead put the cherry on top then I want you to pray for this prayer list Amen. and then come and join me we'll baptize and then we'll come back down and anoint Pastor Jerry okay Amen. stick Amen. around with us we're going to see something Check really one. touching right here Amen give it just a few moments Pastor Tim go ahead this is such a good series I don't know how many can really relate to this, um, but probably everybody in here, um, because it starts from the womb. I can remember, you know, as he was talking, I remember um, as a young, as a young boy growing up, um, having a serious problem with validation. Am I good enough? Um, with classmates. Um, kids in the neighborhood for my parents and I fought that spirit a long time huh how many of us struggle with validation when we were younger see it's real and when I think about it you know how devastating it was it took me down some roads that God didn't want me to go it's so amazing because I, I think about when he was speaking, we got to understand it was the people of God that he was talking about. This was the people that God delivered out of Egypt. Are uh, we really understanding that? And to me, it seemed like it always happened to the folks that posed to know God, choosing the wrong thing. And I did it for years. And it was until God brought me to a place of being broken. See, because really, we really don't know what we really need until we get in God. 
I thank God that my parents raised me up in church because it was better than being out of church. Because one day God introduced himself to me. And it was amazing because it wasn't when I got good. It was when I was rotten and when I was blowing it. I could have cared less about God. See, but we don't like to talk about it when we was a mess. But he showed up in my mess. See, and everybody in the world can speak a word over your life. No good, huh? He ain't going to mount to nothing. This is a favorite one. You're going to be just like your daddy. Huh? But until we can get in the presence of the king, good God. See, I found out one day if I can only get into his presence. See, because I tried everything else. Everything in the world I tried to do. And I found out none of it worked. But when he showed up in my life, see, and the thing about when the Holy Ghost shows up, he'll speak out of this. See, he began to tell me stuff like, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are royalty. Good God Almighty. See, because I didn't know I was royalty until I got in the book. Huh? But I didn't find out until I was in prison who I really was. Growing up in church all my life, but it was in prison that he revealed to me who I am. That I was more than a conqueror. That I was the head and not the tail. So often we lose sight of that when we're growing up because of what we've been through. And instead of speaking this over our children, uh, because we mad with somebody that did us wrong, that hurt us and wound us. And instead of talking out of this, we'll speak out of our wounds, even over our children, to those that are close to us. But when we can learn to speak out of the book, you're a royalty, you're a king. You are queens of the most high God. Huh? See, when Gideon was shifting wheat, the angel showed up. Mighty man of valor. Come on here. He took a Mormonite woman, good God Almighty, and changed her whole life because she had introduced to Jesus. I just got one question and I'm done. Who are you choosing? Amen. See, we need to ask ourselves, who are you choosing? Because every day we have a choice. And if it ain't Jesus, you don't made the wrong choice. Huh? Amen. We got to stop judging people. See, because a lot of times, even in the church, we'll judge people on the outside. But if we can learn to speak life over them, there's greatness in you. Huh. They can't see it. But because we are the people of God, we should see what God want to do in them. Amen. And be able to speak a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge over their life that will change their direction. Huh. That they will come running into the church. Amen. Hallelujah. That's all I got. Come on, somebody. Give God a praise. Oh, my God. Let's have those that are being baptized tonight meet me back here. Pastor Tim is going to get ready to pray over our prayer requests while they're coming. Where, where's the kids being baptized tonight? Come on, buddy. Come right on. We have one more. Okay, I was told two. All right. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's see what we got here. How many believe in the power of prayer? Amen, amen. <laughs> Pastor mentioned this earlier. We want to keep Michael Revis in prayer. He's having surgery Friday to remove the mass that's on his brain. We're going to definitely keep that in prayer. We're going to pray for that tonight also. Pastor Jerry's going to come and stand in for him. Someone standing in for Jerry, Jerry, Jimmy Revis.
We're praying for Michael. What else we got here? Also, Brooks, Heather Brooks. Say it again. Okay, Brooks Heath in the stage. Um, Brain of failure, been in the hospital, now at rehab in Wilson Pines. So we're going to keep her also in prayer. Denise Heath, driver, Lori Gardner's friend, and um, her father. Amen. We're going to definitely keep them in prayer. We're going to lift them up tonight. Amen. We bless the Lord. We believe in God that's going to do a, a, a miracle and heal her. Also, we want to keep in prayer. Debbie Woods, Sister Renee, Aunt Connie Williams, and Billy Joe's mother. We're going to definitely keep that in prayer also. Also, we're going to keep in prayer. Sarah Coppledge Phillips, family has COVID. Justin Person with diabetes. Christopher Rose, Christopher Rose diagnosed with leukemia. Also, David Sparks, health issues. Amen. Stretch your hands towards me. We're going to just believe God for healing. Father God, we come right now in the matchless name of Jesus. God, we give you thanks. We give you praise, God. God, we just prayed this song today, God, when we was in service, that you are Jehovah Jireh. Not only are you Jehovah Jireh, our provider, God, but you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, God. And God, you said healing is the children's bread, God. And we stand on your word and your word alone. And because of the finished work on Calvary's cross, God, you said in your word, by your stripes we were healed, God. And we're standing in that healing, God. And we're moving in that healing, God. We're not going to look at the outward manifestation, God, but we're going to wait on you, God. We're going to trust you and we're going to believe you, God. Knowing, God, that you are God that cannot fail and will not fail, God. We're believing for healing for each and every one of these individuals that we brought up before you, God. We're lifting their names on high, God, and we're thanking now for the work that you're doing in their lives, God. Move now, God, on every situation, God. Bring forth your healing hand. Touch right now, God. Even as the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of your garment, God, and was made whole, God. We're touching you now, God. We're coming on one accord now, God, that they are healed. They are made whole, God. They are restorated, God. They are fully pardoned, God, because of your blood, God. We thank you now, God, for your healing for their lives. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. And the whole church said, Amen. and it is so. since he was uh, shorter than my kneecap. And uh, he's always Brother Mike's little shadow. Wherever you saw one, you saw the other. And uh, he, he's, he's, he's becoming a, a young little man here. Yes. And I'm very proud of him that he made a young man that made a big man's decision. Amen. And Jesus said, forbid not the little children to come unto me, yes. for such is the kingdom yes. of God. The kingdom of God is standing right before you right now, because that is how we are to be with what we know and need of the kingdom. Just like a child, innocent like a child, hallelujah, and expectant and faithful as a child. Amen. And so we're just, we want to just pray over his life tonight and, uh, Let's just stretch our hands in this direction. I'm going to pray over him myself yes. tonight. Father God, we just come to you right now. Yes. And we're just so thankful, God, that little Jace has made this decision. And Lord God, we know that he's young. Yes. We know that there's much for him to experience yes, and go through in life. But God, may he always remember this night. Yes. May he always remember the pledge and the prayer that he played pray last week. And God, we know the enemy. We'll one day try to sift him like we. But let it go down on record tonight as you told Simon Hallelujah. Peter. We have prayed for him yes. that his faith will not fail in those times. 
Because he was brought up in church, he's always going to know the house of God is here. Yeah. He's always going to know that the house of God is a light, it's a beacon of hope, shining bright, Lord God, filled with people who love the Lord and love him. And God, I just pray a hedge of protection over his life. I speak increase on his home. I speak increase on this family. Yeah. And God, we oh. thank you, Lord God, for protecting this child, raising this child up, and calling this child unto salvation, God. We just thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. All right, Amen. you ready, buddy? All right, Jace, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise. Hey. I'm going to raise you up. Yeah. He's solid. He's solid. All right, next, who do we have? Bring up the next contestant. Don't worry about a thing. There we go. Okay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right. What is this young lady's name? Aubrey. 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 Well, it's good to meet you. I saw you at Bible school, too. And how old are you, Aubrey? 11. 11 years old. 11 years old and has made the decision to live for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I am going to ask uh, Sister Pam Johnson, yes. would you stand tonight and pray over Aubrey's baptism? Father, thank you tonight for yes. bringing this young lady to the hour. For those of you that she has made to be yes. able to be in this house every week, Lord, and to be learning your word and to Amen. be studying your word and to be always seeking after you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and in the name of the Father Son the Holy Ghost Holy I baptize Lord. you come on and give God a praise say this, and I, I took my ring off back there. Well, I wear a ring on this finger now, too, but I took my wedding ring off a while ago, but does it, am I still married? Of course. The ring is just an outward sign uh -huh. of an inward commitment. That's right. But whether I got it on or not, I'm still married. This is an outward symbolic sign of what they've already committed to when they asked Jesus into their heart, they prayed that, now they lived that, but this is the symbolic sign also of the old going down and the new coming up to represent the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. I'm going to have tonight another lady. Let's have our missions director, Billy Joe Hopkins, if you would stand tonight yes. and pray over Hannah's baptism.
call on you more often. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, Hannah, are you ready? You know, this is special tonight because this is a family that has just really just dug in their heels and said, we are here, God. We are here to help this vision. And this, the blessings and the breakthroughs just keep coming for this family. And I got news for you, Pearson family. It ain't over yet. Hey, come on, sir. You're going to keep on getting these blessings. Amen. All right, Hannah, here we go, sweetheart. I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I baptize you. You good? You got it. Come on. Stand to your feet. Come on, y'all. Young people getting baptized every week. We need it right here in the summertime. Won't he do it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wherever you go tonight, if you go grab a cup of coffee somewhere, in the cafe even, but uh, if you go anywhere to eat, if you go somewhere tomorrow, when you go to work tomorrow, tell people you witness water baptism. People are getting saved. And we give God the praise for it. We want to thank our online audience tonight. Can we thank them for tuning in? And we will see you back 10 o'clock Sunday online. God bless. But as we prepare to go off the air and as we're going off the air. Everybody, Pastor Daniel Parker here with Assistant Pastor Tim Hall thanking you for tuning in this week and watching this live stream broadcast. Or if you're watching it recorded later on, we thank you. We want you to share it with everybody that you can. Hit like. Tell us something in the comments if we're reaching you. And if you're in driving distance, we would love to have you right here at Christian Fellowship Church on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Come early for coffee and fellowship, and then we're going to have some of the best praise and worship music you'll hear anywhere and series preaching straight from the Word of God. And then on Wednesday nights, we have our weekly Bible study at 7 p.m., and we got all kinds of things going on Sunday evenings, life groups, men's and ladies fellowship, as well as our all-new Kingdom Couples marriage ministry we love you we want you to to sow into the church be a part of the church come on we love you if you got saved today you accepted jesus christ into your heart then we want you to message us right here on our page and we will call and pray for you again thank you for tuning in today pastor tim what say you to the wonderful people out there that's tuned in today we pray if this message has reached you because we're all about kingdom vision amen come see us well, you, we got a seat just for you. We love you. We thank you. And just continue to keep your faith in God's unchanging hand. And we enjoyed you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless.